Hello everyone, uh, my name is Afshin Degan and I'm presenting a CVPR paper GMMCP Tracker Globally Optimal Generalized Maximum Multi-Click Problem for Multiple Object Tracking. This is a joint work with Shayan Modiri and Dr. Mubarak Shah. So the problem of multiple object tracking can be decomposed into two main parts. Uh, in the first part, a pre-trained object detector is used to get the object hypothesis in frame of a sequence. And the backbone of most multiple object tracking is data association, which is, not, uh, which, is, which is just linking detections that belong to the same person and assigning an ID to those person, which eventually would form the tracks for you, as you can see in bottom right. So in this work, we are also focusing on the main component of multiple object tracking, which is data association. And we are proposing a new method which, which solved the data association problem. So if you look back into the literature, um, one way of formulating data association is to consider only few frames during uh, association. For example, bipartite matching is a very popular, um, uh, popular method for solving the data association problem, which is temporally local, and it only considers two frames during association. However, here we are considering many more frames and as you can see here, every detection in one frame is connected to all the other detection in all the other frame. So thus, instead of having a bipartite graph as is shown here, we are dealing with a k-partite complete graph. And that's why our method is temporally global. In our earlier work, we proposed GMCP Tracker, which is published in ECCB 2012, where we proposed gener to use generalized uh, maximum click problem to solve data association problem. And GMCP would find one click by selecting one node from every frame, as is shown here, that has the maximum score across all the clicks in this complete graph. And when we find one track, we would remove it and solve the problem again to find other tracks. Uh, but here in this work, we propose generalized maximum multi-click problem, and where it finds all the tracks simultaneously instead of GMCP that will find only one track at a time. Let's have a look at our framework. Our framework has three main steps. As many other data association methods, we start with a pre-trained object detector to get the object candidate in every frame. And once we get the object candidate, we start with low-level tracklets, which are obtained by just a simple overlap constraints. And basically, the detections that have more than 60% overlap in consecutive frames are connected together. And the low-level tracklets have maximum length of 10 frames and minimum, minimum length of 5 frames. Once we get this reliable low-level tracklets, we would use our GMCP to get the output of our first layer of tracking, which we call the mid-level tracklets. These have the maximum length of 50 frames. And in order to get the final tracks, we can find the same, we use GMMCP again to get the final tracks, as you can see in the slides. This results in the bottom is shown after smoothing the tracks. I can show you the pipeline in the slides. Uh, we have an input video. We have human detection. We get the detection hypothesis. We, have, we get the low-level tracklist, and we divide the video into segments. For example, here we have ten, 10 segments. The first five segments are being fed to one GM, GMMCP graph, and the second five segments are fed to another GMMCP, and each of them would output the mid-level tracklist, as shown here. So we get the mid-level tracklets for first five segments, and we get the mid-level tracklets for the second five segments. Then in order to merge these and get the final tracks, we use, again, GMMCP to merge these tracklets and get final tracks, as shown here. Now let's have a look at how the mid-level tracklet generation works. Here I show the example for six segments of a video. And as you can see, these are the low-level tracks in each segment. The reason that we use low-level tracklets is a uh, bifold. Uh, one is uh, that low-level tracklets are better than just using the detection because we have fewer number of low-level tracklets, so the computational complexity is lower. But the main reason here for us is that we can incorporate motion within the edge cost of connecting two nodes together. Because if we have low-level tracklets, uh, we, have, we are able to incorporate motion models because if we had only two detections, we were not able to consider motion because we need at least three detections to be able to incorporate motion model within the edge cost. So once we have the nodes, each segment is going to form one cluster for us. And again, each node in each cluster is connected to all the other nodes in all the other clusters. And the weight 
associated to each edge is coming from the appearance similarity as well as the motion model. Once we create the graph, uh, the, the goal of GMMCP is to select K nodes from every cluster that would form K clicks that has the maximum score across all the clicks of this complete graph. So after solving GMMCP, you see that we can get three tracks simultaneously despite GMCP tracker that would give one track at a time. Here we get all the three tracks at the same time. So and you see that whenever the node was missing, we didn't have a detection for the person, the dummy nodes are placed in the right, right location to fill the gap. And we're going to talk about these dummy nodes later in the um, next slides. So you can see better in this example that I'm showing them separately. Again, and for this track, we were missing two detections. We have placed two dummy nodes in the right location. This, this is another track, and this is another track. So again, all these tracks are found simultaneously. In order to find the final trajectories, it's again the same problem. We have to find another data association problem. The only difference is that the node here are the mid-level tracklets instead of the low-level tracklets. Now let's have a look to see how do we solve the GMMCP. GMMCP is an NP-hard problem. But the, 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 way, the way that we are trying to solve GMMCP here is that we are assuming no relaxation to the original problem and we try to formulate N the GMCP problem directly. And for that, we use binary integer programming to formulate it. In order to make sure the solution found using binary integer programming is a valid solution to GMMCP, we have to satisfy three constraints. The, fir the first constraint here ensures that um, exactly k nodes from every cluster is selected. The second constraint would ensure that if one node is selected, h minus one edge connected to that node should also be selected, where h is the number of clusters. And the last constraint would ensure that the solution found by binary integer program would actually form a click. Now let's have a look at the way that we handle occlusion in our tracking pipeline. Again, as we mentioned before, objects are not present in all the frames and due to occlusion, pose variation, uh, we may be missing some objects in some of the frame as you can see in this frame. In order to be ha able to handle occlusion, we place dummy nodes in every cluster and the dummy nodes are treated the same as all the other nodes in the graph. And each dummy node is again connected to all the other nodes in, in, in our graph. And the weight associated to these edges are fixed the, that we found them empirically. Now the problem is that how many dominoes do you want to add to every cluster? We can find the upper bound of dominoes needed to add to every cluster, but we have to keep in mind one major problem, and that's, that is GMMCP is an NP-hard problem. So the more nodes you have in your graph, the more complex it would become to solve. So we would want, we would want to avoid uh, such things. So in order to be able to speed up our performance and also to be able to handle occlusion efficiently, we propose aggregated dummy nodes that replaces all the dummy nodes in one cluster with one single super dummy nodes. Or we call it aggregated dummy nodes. And as you can see here, instead of three dummy nodes in this graph, now we have only one dummy node in the graph, in, in that cluster. So now that we have only one dummy node per cluster, if we have multiple detection missing in that cluster, we need to allow that dummy node to be selected multiple times. Thus, the variable associated to that dummy node is no longer binary variable. So it can take any integer values, any positive integer values. So we need to formulate GMMCP using mixed binary integer programming because we have both binary variables and integer variables in our graph now. In order to again ensure that the solution found using GMMCP is a valid solution, we have to satisfy three constraints as shown here. Some of the constraints as the first one is similar to the previous formulation we had, the binary integer programming, and some of them are new, like the last one. Um, and, and in order to, these constraints are because mostly because we have a new variable, aggregated dummy nodes, and this is the variable associated to aggregated dummy nodes that can take any integer variables. And this one guarantees that k nodes from each cluster are selected. And we have this constraint that again enforce the sum of outgoing edges of a node and entering a cluster is uh, greater than or smaller than one. Is, is smaller than one. 
The metrics that we used, uh, uh, we used two set of metrics for quantitative comparison. One is clear metrics, mod A and mod B, and we also use trajectory-based measure, which is mostly track, mostly loss, as well as ID switches. Here you see the results of our method. We compare our method with competitive approaches for town center sequence. We get uh, uh, the uh, mod A is increased by 2%, and the number of ID switches is also uh, lowered. The other methods haven't reported the number of ID switches. Uh, but this is a very long sequence, thus the high number of ID switches is expected. The TUD crossing, the MOTA, is very close to the state of the art, but for some of the sequences like STAT may be improved by 5% over mod A, and we get better ID switches. And this is two new sequences that we use in our evaluation, parking lot 2 and pizza sequence. And again, as you can see, we, use, uh, we can improve state of the art both in MOTA, mostly track, as well as ID switches. We use publicly available implementation of these methods, and these numbers reported here can be considered as a good lower bound for those methods. Let's have a look at our runtime comparison. Uh, we compare our method where we are using aggregated dominoes and where we are not using aggregated dominoes, and we also compare the runtime with our ECCV12 paper GMCP tracker. This is for parking lot sequence, where we are changing the number of frames in every batch from 20 to 60 and the, the vertical axis shows the time that it takes to solve the data association problem. This is the care for GMCP. This is the care for GMMCP where we are not using aggregated dominoes. And this is the care for GMMCP when using aggregated dominoes. And as you can see, we can get up to two order of magnitude speed up compared to GMCP when we use our aggregated dominoes and mixed binary integer programming formulation. Here's another graph for TUD crossing. Again, the number of frame and segments changing from 20 to 60. And as you can see, when we are using aggregated dominoes, the performance uh, and the runtime is much lower compared to when we are not using that and also compared to GMCP tracker. We also compare the runtime of our method with respect to number of targets in the sequence. Here, the number of frames in every batch is set to 50, and this is parking lot sequence. And as you can see, as the number of targets increases, the uh, runtime of the method also increases. Overall, our method in average takes less than two seconds to process 50 frame of parking lot sequence, which is close to real-time performance, while GMCP takes about 120 seconds to process 50 frame in average, which is almost uh, four frame per second. Now let's have a look at some qualitative results for our method. On the left, you see the mid-level track list generated by GMMCP, and on the right, you see the smooth final trajectories found by GMMCP tracker. This is the parking lot pizza sequence. Again, this is a very crowded sequence with a lot of inter-occlusion. As you can see, we showed you previously in the table, we can do much better than compared to competitive methods with fewer number of ID switches thanks to our global formulation. And this is the results on parking lot 2 sequence. Again, there's a lot of interaction between objects because there's kind of a fighting scene here. There's a lot of actions happening here. Continue the same data, no? Yes, it can, it can, as you can see, it can keep the ID of targets throughout the sequence for most of them. Now let's have a look at our occlusion handling. We see you pieces of sequences that targets go under heavy articulation and we show that we can keep the ID for that person throughout the occlusion. You see the person 12 here? There's a long occlusion. As you can see, the ID remains the same for that person. Our experiments show that we can uh, handle occlusion up to 100 frames and even 150 frames sometimes in a sequence. This is town center sequence and some uh, parts that there's, there's a lot of inter-occlusion between objects. See some more qualitative results on town center sequence. And again, this is a very long sequence, 4,500 frames. 
So in summary, we formulate multiple object tracking as a new graph theoretic problem called generalized maximum multi-clique problem. We propose uh, mul uh, a solution for GMMCP using mixed binary integer programming. And we propose an efficient occlusion handling through aggregated dummy nodes. And we show that we can achieve performance close to real time. And we show improvement over state of the art on several benchmark sequences. Thank you.